Hello? Hello. OK. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Eliana. I am the senior officer for the Innovator Program here at MIT Seoul. We are so excited to introduce you to six of the most promising innovators working in the financial inclusion sector. I know for you an opportunity to chat with them. Um, but first, let's say a little bit about how we got here. So at the beginning of the year, we asked this question. How can we provide financially excluded individuals and small enterprises with the tools they need to withstand financial shocks and build wealth? We received 421 applications from 75 countries. And we work with SOLVE members, the MIT community, and a phenomenal leadership group to select 15 finalists, interview them, and select the six of them that are here with us today. Uh, speaking of the expert judges who helped us select this team, they volunteered their time. And I hear that they had a little fun, too. Um, so I want to take a moment to thank them. So let's give them a round of applause here. And now, without further delay, I'm delighted to present you the six selected teams for the 2023 Financial Inclusion Challenge. They will present their solution to us, and then we'll have a few price announcements, and then we'll, you'll have a chance to talk to them. And as we do listen to them, I have one request for you. Please take note and keep track of your questions, your suggestions, your ideas, people that you might connect them with to help them further their work uh, for when you get a chance to talk to them afterwards. And that's enough of me. <laughs> um, so without further ado, I would like to welcome to kick us off uh, Rejoy Susim, uh, representing Outburner. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rejoice Usim. I'm so excited to be in this room with everyone. As much as I, I'm so much under the weather, but it's OK. We'll do our best as an entrepreneur. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, MIT. This is so much of a great opportunity for myself and my company. So we'll just get straight to the business of the day. Yeah, so I'll speak from where I'm coming from. Um, in Nigeria, you can imagine farmers go through a lot when it comes to working very hard, 12 months in a year. And you keep wondering why they have to go through severe poverty or rather being trapped in poverty. Not because those farmers do not have the knowledge, not because they didn't have what to, the effort, but we've come to discover that these farmers are not having the right um, financial capacity and at the same time knowledge and access to market for their products. So I'll tell you a story about Amina. Amina happens to be one of our dedicated farmers we're working with in the last 12 months. And we get to discover that she has all it takes. But the problem with her is she doesn't have access to finances, at the same time access to the light rights, market linkages, and the knowledge for her to grow and a scale. And this became a problem. So we came together as a company to find how do we create the solution for those farmers to scale and be better. Because for us, it's the impact that those farmers go home at the end of the day because it's still just to work 12 months. So this is our solution. In our entrepreneur, we said, okay, we have to get a one, all one platform. It's an all one platform where we work with this farmer. Sorry for my voice. I've been under the cold for days now. Yeah, pardon me for that. So we have the Age School. What the Age School does is to give the farmer the right knowledge for your work. We also have the Age Credit to is a, um, a farm loan for those farmers to see how they can have the right finances. We have the Age Supplies. What the Age Supply helps those farmers to do is to make sure they have the right supplies for their produce. And mind you, we work with all around agricultural farmers from vegetables to livestock. We work with those guys. Then the Age IQ is to help them to see how they can 
have the right knowledge for what you're doing. Then we have the AG trade. We connect those farmers to international local market to see that they can have fair profit and at the end of the day. So, so far as a company, we've been able to generate and see how we can grant loans. About 1,200 loans have been given to those farmers. And at the same time, which is totaling about 1.5 million uh, $1.5 million so far when working with those farmers. And as a company, we said, we have the right team members we've been working with. We have Michael and myself and the other team members who have been tirelessly working to see that we bring farmers to the right support. And for our investors and our audience here, we are at the strategic point in our company. We are looking for strategic partnership, because we know with the strategic partnership, we're going to scale and make the solution become bigger than what we're doing in Nigeria at, the, at this point. And at the same time, we know with this partnership, we're going to grow and at the same time, work with more farmers. At the moment, we're working with 33 plus farmers, but we know with the right partnership here, we'll do better. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Rejoice. I love hearing when climate also goes through every solution. It's amazing to see, and thank you so much for being here with us. So up next, we have Michael Lensing representing Lucrify. Please give him a warm welcome. Hi, good evening. My name is Michael. Let me present you Lucrify. Since 2017, I've been working as a volunteer mentor for small and micro companies. And the question that I heard most was, how do I know if I make a profit and pay my bills? I also understood that they face, they, those small entrepreneurs are facing lack of finance control. They are using pen and paper to control their finance. They don't know what to do with the numbers. They are not friendly, they are not connected to friendly tools like Excel. And they are facing lack of time. I also asked to the same audience, what could be the best option to them? And everybody is saying, could it be a low ticket investment? Could tell me what to do? Could take that less than five minutes a day? And could be at WhatsApp? Just a reminder, WhatsApp is the most used app in Latin America. Then we came up with Lucrify. Lucrify is a merge of artificial intelligence with WhatsApp UX when we transform simple text messages into financial entries, graphics, and analysis, providing an affordable mentorship in a very fast and intuitive way, costing less than $5 a month. Or go to market, no, for, um, the, the, the potential market for, for Lucrify is the more than 20 million companies in Latin America and Africa. The ideal customer are women aging from 25 to 60. That's the case we have nowadays, people using from 25 to 60. Uh, wage from 300 to uh, $500 monthly. And we are go to market is Brazil for this year, Latin America next year. We are doing that. We are doing that. We have partnerships, digital marketing, referrals program, associations with accountants, for instance, and providing 30, 60 days of free trial. The next steps are expand Lucrify to English into Spanish, and expand, of course, our international connections. Uh, we would like to. We love to give to apply the gamification to Lucrify improve the IT robustness and improve the data analysis for the two. Our goal is to reach, in two years, 10,000 customers. From the MIT so what do we expect? Uh, first of all, partnerships. Meta, local NGOs, microfinances, we are like, we'd love to connect to those guys in order to help us to expand to another request that we have to international expansion to Latin America and Africa, Chile, Argentina, Peru, Colombia, Kenya, Angola, Ethiopia. We, do, we love also to have the user engagement mentoring. The legal part is important to expand our business to other countries. The technology is also important to understand cybersecurity stuff. How can we do perform better in technology issues? And of course, funding for the middle of next year as equity and grant. To conclude, the team it's me and on technology and partnerships, Hakel on marketing communication, and we have two advisors and one IT freelancer. That's Lucrify. Thanks for your time. Look at your business finance control using WhatsApp. Thank you.
Thank you, Michael. I cannot emphasize enough how important and the high penetration WhatsApp has in Latin America and how of a game changer this solution would be, and it is. Um, okay, I'm happy to introduce next Janik Muposho, representing Naya Health. Oops. What, what a bad way to start a presentation. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Yannick. I'm the co-founder of Naya, a digital health financing platform which provides cashless health loans to informal workers in order for them to uh, pay for the medical expenses. A few years ago, uh, a young Cameroonian lady by the name of Monique was pregnant with twins in intense labor when she was sadly left to die at the doorstep of a public hospital in Cameroon simply because she didn't have enough money to pay for the medical expenses. On the picture there, you see a sister desperately trying to save the unborn children by cutting through Monique's belly with a piece of blade. The story went viral at the time on social media and it was reported across major uh, media platforms, CNN and BBC News. Now, this situation is not unique to Cameroon because social security and uh, universal health coverage across sub-Saharan Africa is almost non-existent. So the Medical insurance penetration in Sub-Saharan Africa is below 5% and mostly caters for the uh, upper middle class. Now, this is where NIA, our solution, comes in. We support informal workers and healthcare providers by leveraging technology and community saving clubs, commonly called TONTIN, in order to facilitate access to financial and healthcare, and healthcare uh, 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 for the informal um, workers. Uh, how does this work? Let's take the example of Matu. Matu is one of our most loyal customers. She happens to sell vegetables in the informal marketplace in Cameroon. And then she's also a member of the Tontin with whom we are in partnership with. So Matu happens to be sick and cash constrained at some point in the middle of the month. She then gets onto our platform using a cell phone. She makes a request for a health loan in order to pay for a medical uh, consultation at the doctor, at the clinic. So her request is then assessed and successfully uh, approve uh, using AI technology on our platform. And Matu receives an SMS, a code, which she takes to one of our affiliated medical service provider to seek the care that she needs. Now, Matu has about 30 days to repay a loan, and we have an agreement with the medical service provider to settle our account with them within a period of 45 days. So this is all cashless and it's self-funding. So one of our solution is also for a health saving card that you offer to informal workers in order for them to save today for the future medical expenses. Over the next, over the next, uh, sorry, over the last uh, few years, uh, a year or so, we've been focusing our energy on running a successful pilot in Cameroon, which we did. We achieved, uh, um, uh, we onboarded about a million uh, informal workers, uh, sorry, a thousand informal workers onto our platform. And then we also onboarded a number of tontines and medical service providers. Our goal for the next uh, five years is to our goal for the next five years is to uh, onboard over a million informal workers onto our platform across Sub-Saharan Africa. So we're very grateful to have reached the final, and we're looking forward to meet with those who can assist us with uh, strengthening our AI capabilities, our digital capabilities, and also uh, help us roll out our solution across Sub-Saharan Africa. Thank you. When we talk about withstanding financial shocks, this is what we're talking about. And those financial shocks might come from a healthcare bill and might come from a climate related event. And to talk a little bit more about that, I like to welcome Rumi side representing the solution Rahad Vima. Um, hi. I'm Rumi Singh, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Rahat. Our solution, Rahat Bima, oh, sorry, our solution, Rahat Bima, is a blockchain-based insurance platform to support smallholder farmers build financial resilience against climate shocks. In Nepal, agriculture is a significant source of livelihood. 
but with unpredictable weather patterns and extreme weather events, already vulnerable populations can be pushed further into poverty. Now, access to insurance can protect farmers against climate-related challenges. However, traditional insurance processes are lengthy, cumbersome, and unaffordable, leaving behind the people who need it the most. That's where Rahat Bima steps in. We are a uh, blockchain-based insurance platform that uses mobile phones uh, with self-executing smart contracts for direct and accurate payout. Um, let me walk you through how this works for a farmer. You can buy insurance to protect your crops from a seed vendor or an agent, and you could protect it against, let's say, flood risk. And maybe your region is at risk of receiving 50 inches of rain in less than three days. Now, the smart contract will verify this predetermined index against multiple um, data sources. So once this threshold is reached, it triggers an automated payout uh, to the farmer. So he receives an SMS and a voice notification and automated payout almost instantly, providing them the funds to bounce back from the event very, very quickly. Um, Rahat Bhima eliminates long and lengthy processes of claim assessment processes by predetermined indicators with uh, objective data assessment and very, very quick cash payout. And farmers gain visibility to the process with, um, with, through their phones even if they are unbanked. Uh, we are working on an early stage pilot and looking to expand it beyond Nepal in the next two years. Um, we've, on our overall solution, we have reached out to 16,000 beneficiaries and 100 mobilizer network in two countries. Um, we've been part of some amazing mentorship and support program with investment. Now with MIT Salt, we're looking for strategic partnerships in developing nations, organizations and companies who are interested in working in this space to um, reach the unbanked. And also looking to work and learn from tech for good and blockchain for good in this space to build our sustainability and scalability. And finally, very, very excited to introduce my dynamic team. We are a team with expertise on fintech, blockchain, social entrepreneurship, hydrology, and we're very, very excited with this remarkable blend of energy and are looking forward to bringing in and building financial resilience for low-income households. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rumi. And I cannot stress enough also the importance of building community and getting the right tools to the people who need it the most. And I'm happy to introduce you now to Andrew Mutua, representing PESA Kid. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Andrew Mutua. I'm the founder and CEO of uh, PESA kit. At PESA kit, we are building the future of money and digital commerce at the last mile in Africa. And how we do it is we work with mobile money agents like Grace, who experience a lot of challenges in their day-to-day -day operations of their small business. Uh, she runs out of liquidity 70% of the time during the day. Her float or her liquidity is fragmented because she's serving multiple providers. And with that, she's part of over 131 million formal MSMEs uh, in developing countries, um, experiencing about 135 billion in financial unmet needs. So we've started PESA Kit to empower agents like Grace to become the go-to shops for financial services in their community so that they and their communities can better uh, grow and prosper in our continent. Uh, how we do it is we've segmented our products into three. So we've built a mobile app which they use to access our services. And if the first service that we launched was financial services, uh, where we allow them to access credit uh, to replenish their liquidity. We developed our own proprietary credit scoring engines, so we're able to use telco data, location data, psychrometric data, and so many other different offline data points to create a credit score that we use to give them credit. And also we enable them to access digital insurance 
micro insurance which they can use for their family and their own healthcare and also for their businesses. Then we introduced other products which now enable them to make more money. We introduced e-commerce, transforming them to more like e-commerce delivery points in their communities. And we also enable them to order inventory and resell within their shops. Uh, so far, we are in Kenya, Ghana, Uganda, and Tanzania, and we're looking to launch into uh, Ethiopia before the end of the year and three more other countries. Uh, we've been able to serve over 25 million uh, customers, uh, 12 million of whom are women. And at the moment, we actively serve about 74,000 agents and merchants. Uh, we are looking to serve half a million agents and merchants in the next five years, and about 30 million women serve. Uh, and our biggest uh, initiative now is to build financial health for the agents and merchants so that they become the go-to place uh, for, uh, the, for financial services. We have a great, dynamic, diverse, extremely talented team and very passionate about our mission. Our asks for today and to the Solver community as we get to know you better is partnerships. Uh, we are looking for people who are looking to work at the last mile, uh, distribute products at the last mile. We are currently fundraising and we, we are here to get to know impact investors. We are also building an advisory board and we have about two slots left for guys who we might meet here. And we're also looking for partners who will help us understand how better to measure our impact. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Andrew. Thank you so much for your work. And now, last but not least, I would like to welcome Karungari Wachira, representing Tiny Totos. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Karangari Washira, and I am the People and Partnerships Director at Tiny Totos, a Kenyan social enterprise working to solve the childcare crisis in Africa. Worldwide, nothing derails a woman's earning potential more than becoming a mother. Childcare responsibilities undermine her focus on work, her ability to save, invest, um, and develop credit history. With one billion children expected to be living in Africa by the year 2055, and only 20% of mothers being able to afford reliable childcare, the childcare crisis threatens to keep women trapped in poverty for life. The gender earning gap is really a childcare penalty. At Tiny Totos, we're a Kenyan social enterprise looking to transform the childcare, the informal childcare market, and turn the childcare crisis into an opportunity. Our social franchise model works with ad hoc babysitters, offering them access to training, um, capital, uh, technology, and networks so that they can become profitable childcare entrepreneurs. Each daycare partner that we work with allows 50 other women to get to work, giving women the tools and resources to overcome their economic hardships together. Most of our partners need capital in order to transform their substandard centers into something of quality. We approach financial institutions to offer loans for our members, but there were no banks or microfinance institutions that were, would take a chance on them. Um, with no conventional assets, uh, employment contracts, or savings, uh, savings um, they were considered too high risk to lend to. So we set up a loan facility. How did we vet and approve of loans? We used the earnings from and payments for childcare. Our custom-built uh, phone-based operating system allows our daycare owners to register and track our clients, their clients' attendance and payments, creating a database of care economy of cash transactions. This data helped us know our customers. We were able to create credit profiles based on their daycare, their daycare, their daycare earnings and the parents' payments. We help women such as Cicely, the owner of By Grace Daycare. With two years of her business records, we were able to confidently give her a small facility loan to increase or to expand her business. In one year, she was able to grow her business by 30% and go into a bigger space with more rent, a risk that she was not willing to take before. 
Tiny Toto's bet that determining credit worthiness, not based on what women have, but how they invest in and earn from childcare has paid off. Our partner and parent loan portfolio is in single digit arrears. For women who do not have conventional assets or credit histories, an innovative uh, credit scheme based on diverse and different risk criteria allows them to flourish. and is actually quite critical to bridging the poverty gap. Our model is being scaled across East Africa. We've piloted in Somalia and Ethiopia and are entering Rwanda and Uganda now. Our team is diverse and highly experienced in scaling businesses, technology, and early childcare. Our goal is to, act to support women, one million women, um, access credit, uh, improved childcare, and opportunity by the year 2030. And in order to do this, we are looking to raise and invest $1.5 million in our tech tools, data protection, and in strengthening our team. Thank you so much for listening. What an amazing group. We have heard about how to, they're benefiting merchants, farmers, other entrepreneurs, caregivers, and mothers. Um, I'm certainly feeling hopeful. I hope you do too. Um, and I want to take a moment to announce the recipient of the Financial Inclusion Challenge Community Award. Every year, we invite members of the public to vote for their favorite solution in an open innovation platform. And the finalists who receive the most votes from each challenge are awarded the Solve Community Award and $2,000. Without further ado, I'm excited to announce this year Financial Inclusion Challenge Community Award is Rahat Bima. Rumi, please join me for a picture. I want to present the Andam Foundation Prize for Refugee Inclusion from a longtime supporter of SOL, the Andam Foundation. This prize was available to teams across SOL's portfolio, including SOLVER alumni. And because the winners are not able to join us in person today, we caught up with two of them to give them the good news. And we want to share that moment with you. My name is uh, Yusuf Baikan. I am the Chief Investment officer of FP Group. I am here on behalf of our chairman and CEO, Mr. Fatih Bora. The Andan Foundation is a, a non-profit humanitarian foundation based in Switzerland. And Andan leads private sector initiatives to support families fleeing their homes due to war, internal conflict, and climate change. It identifies and develops innovative, sustainable solutions promoting refugee self-reliance, boosting their resilience, and fostering their inclusion in their new countries. MIT Seoul innovators are at the forefront of contributing solutions to assist in these fronts. This is why the Andan Foundation has partnered with MIT Seoul to create a prize supporting solutions that are advancing economic, financial, and political inclusion of refugees. And as FP Group, we are proud to be the co-sponsor of the 2023 Andan Prize for Innovation in Refugee Inclusion. 22 innovators actually submitted their solution to this prize, and it was difficult to narrow the pool. But after careful deliberation, we are pleased to announce that Hello World, Utiva, and Fair Cap Clean Water have all been selected as recipients of the 2023 Andan Prize for Innovation in Refugee Inclusion. I would like to congratulate all the teams for their dedicated work. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> really amazing. Thank you so much. That's Thank you. absolutely amazing. I had 
had no idea what this call was going to be about. I thought it might be about um, impact reporting or that's absolutely amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Yusuf. And thank you to Solve yeah. as well. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. I actually thought that we we're coming to come and do another, you know, series of questions about what we've been up to. Um, I never knew that we, this is going to be another <laughs> good news. You know, this is really good. I'm very excited about this. Thank you so much, Yusuf. Thank you, Kathy. Um, this is really very great news. So thank you. Thank you for all of you and, and on behalf of your teams, your people as well, your amazing uh, efforts in thank the region. You. Thank it's, you so much. Thank you. It's such thank a joy. This is such, I've been on Zoom all day today telling yeah. our story. I've been talking to DRC and Botswana and Uganda and worrying all day about fundraising and scaling. And this has absolutely made my week and my day. And it's such a privilege to partner with an organization and a group of people who share our values of refugee dignity, um, communities Sorry. first. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Fair Gab, Clean Water, Ultiva, and Hello World. And now um, I'm excited to welcome uh, Marika Villen, SVP of Global Identity and Fraud Partnerships from Experience to present the Experian Prize. Please welcome her. Another slightly slippery entrance there. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's really been a pleasure to hear all of these very inspirational solutions presented by all of you, you know, inter innovators and entrepreneurs. I certainly, like I'm sure all of you, feel very hopeful for our future. Uh, with that in mind, I'm really excited to present the next award. We at Experian aim for financial health and inclusion for everyone. And with that goal and mission in mind, we have partnered with MIT Solve to support the Solver teams uh, through this Experian prize. This prize will be given this year for two recipients, uh, and we'll hope this will help to them to grow their business. After much deliberation, given that the teams were so excellent, I am thrilled to announce the recipients of the Experian Prize, and they are Tiny Totos and Lucrify. Congratulations. Uh, please come make up Lenz and Karangari Bachira. Please join me to accept the award. Congratulations again. Hey, <laughs> I'm now about to turn you loose to talk directly with these innovators. Remember when I ask you to keep track of your questions, suggestions, comments? This is the time for them. So each of them has a table, either here or in the hallway. Um, please introduce yourself, ask questions, and think how much, how might you support each other's work. Um, I encourage you to visit a couple of tables over the 30 minutes that we have for networking and know that we can set up connections afterwards as well. Thank you all for being here. Um, I hope you m make great connections with all solver teams. And afterwards, we'll head to the coffee break and then we'll be back here for the closing plenary at 4 p.m. Thank you so much. <laughs>